Hi again. So in this video, I'm going to teach you another circuit, this time a circuit for the RAM, exactly for DDR2 RAM. So as you can see here, this is basically the circuit for the RAM. As you can see here, we have 1.8 volt. So as you know, 1.8 volt voltage is for DDR2. Okay. So let's discuss a, a little bit about RAM voltages. So we have basically many types of RAM. For example, we have DDR1. Its voltage is 2.5 volt. DDR2, the voltage is 1.8 volt. DDR3, 1.5 volt. DDR4, its voltage is 1.2 volt. And DDR5, the voltage is 1.1 volt. So for us this time, we will discuss the circuit that generates 1.8 volts working voltage for DDR2. But always the working principle is the same. So remember you again, understanding the schematics, the computer or laptop schematics will make things easier for you. You know why? Because in the motherboard, when you understand the architecture of the schematics, you can easily fix any failure. So for example, in the motherboard for the RAM circuit, you will find the IC, as you can see, the integrated circuit, and near of integrated circuit, you will find MOSFETs, two MOSFETs, and the inductor, and you will find capacitors. Okay, so you will understand easily that these two MOSFETs are connected to this control IC and driven or controlled by this IC. So you will check here the pinout of this MOSFET. You should find 19 volt, as you can see, in the drain of one of these two MOSFETs. It's mandatory. If you don't find 19 volt here, the main voltage V in in one of these MOSFETs means 19 volt is missing. Of course, you will not get 1.8 volt. And you will know 100% that if you test or you check this inductor using the multimeter, you should find which voltage 1.8 volt here. This is the test point here or here in the capacitor. Okay, and that's why the schematics are very important. That's why I focus on teaching you how to read and how to analyze laptop or computer schematics. Okay, so let's get started. So what we have here, so let's first check or see the component that composed the circuit, the circuit for the RAM. So here we have always the control IC, as you can see, this is the control IC. Okay, its reference in the motherboard is PU10, as you can see, okay? So this control IC, of course, should be connected to two MOSFETs. So always we find two MOSFETs in the normal circuits in the motherboard. But for the CPU circuit, you will find two channels, not just one channel, two channels means four MOSFETs or even three or four channels. More means six MOSFET, eight or even 12 MOSFETs, okay? The CPU is exceptional. So here we have two MOSFETs, as you can see. So here the first MOSFETs or the higher MOSFETs is always connected to the main voltage. As you can see, we have the V in hand, 19 volts. And the second MOSFET is always connected to the ground. Then, as you can see, of course, here we have some other components like resistors, capacitors, like around the IC, all this component is just a secondary component. This component around the IC is for protection and stabilization, okay? But the working or the mandatory component is the IC, the two MOSFETs, this inductor, as you can see, we have here PL9, as you can see, always the reference for inductor is L or PL, okay? Then here we have 
two filtering capacitors. This is a ceramic capacitor, and over here we have electrolytic capacitors. We we'll called it also polarized capacitors because here we have plus and minus or even chemical capacitors. Okay, and then we will get here one point point eight volts. Okay, for the run. So here, as you can see, we have. Always in the input, you will find two or more ceramic capacitors. Okay, as I told you before, we called it sometimes PF capacitors or picofarad capacitors because usually the capacity of these capacitors is in picofarad. That's why we called it sometimes PF capacitors or picofarad capacitors. Okay, so. Here we have 19 volt, usually 19 volt. It will pass through these capacitors. As you can see, it's reference. We have here PC, okay? PC 29, PC 118, etc. You, you will find for reference of capacitors PC or C, the same, okay? So 19 volt will pass through these capacitors in order to what? The purpose of these capacitors is to remove the noise from the circuit, the noise of the voltage, okay? They eliminate the noise. So here we will get a pure 19 volt without noise, but it's not yet filtered because here we have the filtered capacitor. So 19 volt will be present here, okay? So here we want to get how much voltage? 1.8 volt so here we have 19 volt here we want to get about 1.8 volt so here as you can see we have the control signals as you can see here. this is the control signal over here okay so here we have the control signal so this control signal will be generated directly to the gauge of this MOSFET once this control signal is here, the 19 volt will pass directly through this MOSFET. But it's not the entire 19 volt. Just here, 1.8 volt. We will get here 1.8 volt. Because the control signals determine the amount of voltage that should be as you can see here we have drive high and here we have 1.8 volt drive okay so this IC will generate just a control signal that will control this MOSFET in order to get here 1.8 volt okay so why we use this MOSFET over here we will get here 1.8 volt so what is the meaning or the purpose of this MOSFET so guys I repeat always in my videos the main of this MOSFET because I get many questions about oh, why we find many MOSFETs and many capacitors in the schematic why we should just use just one MOSFET for example why we should just use this MOSFET for example we can use for example just this MOSFET like this okay without this one okay but the purpose of the of this MOSFET is very important. So here this MOSFET is connected to the ground via its source. So here we have drain, or with the drain is four pins connected together. Here we have the gates, as you can see here we have drive low, here drive high, and here we have drive low as you can see. Okay, so this MOSFET is connected to, to the ground in order to eliminate a residual or an extra voltage. So pay attention because for us, we want to get here just how much? 1.8 volt. We want to get here 1.8 volt. But this is electronics and this is signals. Maybe the control signal will send a not accurate control signal we will get down here 2 volts or 1.4 volts it could be okay so here the importance of this MOSFET is to eliminate the residual voltage for example if we could if we get here 
to volt or to volt normally we should get 1.8 volt but us we get 2 volt so this MOSFET will e eliminate 0.2 volt to the ground in order to get a pure or an exact voltage so the 1.8 volt that we will get here will pass directly to the inductor over here so this inductor as you know has as a purpose to increase the current because here we get 1.8 volt but the current could be not enough to feed the circuit i mean the circuit that we have here okay so here we have the inductor pl9 that will increase the current and then we will get an exact voltage 1.8 volt with exact current now here as you can see in this stage what we should do in this stage normally excuse me in this stage the signal should be filtered okay here we have an electrolytic capacitor that will filter the signal or the current in order to get in order to get what we will get a continue current okay we will get here a continue current okay so this is basically how the 1.8 volt circuit for the ram is worked so i get sometimes other question about what we should check when we get for example a failure in a ram circuit or even cp circuit or any circuit so when you get a failure or the motherboard is failed in each circuit you should verify same things you should first verify whether you get 19 volt or not when you will verify you can verify everywhere in this capacitors or in the drain of the first MOSFET okay you should verify here whether you get 19 volt or not if you get 19 volt here that's okay means you get 19 volt you should just check whether you have the control signal here because without the control signal okay the 1.8 volt cannot be generated 1.8 volt cannot be generated without this control signal okay without the control signal the voltage cannot be generated okay so you will verify 19 volt is present here in the drain or somewhere here in the in this side of several capacitors then check the control signal if you find that all these signals are okay then and you still not get 1.8 volt over here then you should check this inductor as you can see this inductor ca could be cutted inductor so this inductor could be a cutted inductor you should check it then you should check what you should check also do this capacitor and also this capacitor so because if any of this capacitor is shorted to the ground means this power rail hand will be directly shorted to the ground you will not get 1.8 volts and of course you can check also the circuit by checking the heat of the ic because the ic also could be shorted to the ground why as you can see here we have the ic connected to the ground over here and also connected to the ground via as you can see ceramic capacitors as you can see via this one also via this one and via this one do you see so always you will find integrated circuits or ICs in the motherboard are connected to the ground via ceramic capacitors as you can see also here it is connected to the ground via the ceramic capacitors so 
I will give you an astuce to check whether this ice is short circuited to the card or not. If you check, for example, using the multimeter one of these capacitors, and you find that this capacitor is shorter to the ground, and this also shorter to the ground, and this also shorter to the ground, means automatically that this IC is shorted to the ground. Okay, you can just remove it and check again. So this is guys all about this video. So the 1.8 volt for the RAM. And remember, there is another voltage for the RAM. It's not just 1.8 volt. For example, for DDR2, we have 1.8 volt and the RAM for terminals VTT 0.9 volts. Okay, so for DDR2, the main voltage is 1.8 volt and the VTT voltage is 0.9 volts. Okay, the half of the main voltage. For DDR1, the main voltage is 2.5 volts and the VTT voltage or the voltage for terminal is the, is the half of 2.5 volt means 1.25 volt. So for DDR3, the main voltage is 1.5 volt and the VTT voltage is 0.75 volt. For DDR4, the main voltage is 1.2 volt. And the RAM or the voltage for terminals is 0.6 volt. And finally, for DDR5, the main voltage is 1.1 volt, and the VTT voltage or the RAM or the voltage for RAM terminals is 0.55 volt. So this is how you can differentiate between the voltage for all types of RAM. So. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, uh, I will see you in the next video. But please don't forget to subscribe if not already subscribed, to share the video and to like the video because these actions motivate me to create more content and more unique and useful videos for you guys. And of course, for anyone who want to join me and to discover more content and more unique schematics, I have my Patreon page where I upload daily a in a, in a daily basis, lots of schematics and mini tricks and tips. So thank you very much. See you on the next video.